go. Matty Hayward and Samuel Mayer against Vincent McCarthy and Paul O'Donovan. In the heavyweight double on the left hand side, McCarthy was the heavyweight double because they are the bigger athletes. Um, had you know a really strong semi-final yesterday. They were much quicker to the first marker, but both crews had the same time to the second marker. But it'd just be interesting to see how they go off. You know whether they can take an advantage over the Irish lightweights because this Irish lightweight boat will not go away. They have a tremendous second half normally, but yeah. it'll be interesting to see how much they've enjoyed their time since they won in Tokyo. Absolutely, <laughs> it's how much they've enjoyed their time. They certainly enjoy everything they do, it seems to me, but in the bow seat there of the far crew, that is Matthew Hayward from Nottingham Rowing Club. In front of him is Samuel Mayer from Tideway Scholars School, and they will have watched uh, the races and they will have watched the videos of the races that they've seen so far and seen how other heavyweights have tried to overturn the lightweight doubles champion so they have got some intel the others didn't have in uh, facing up to the Olympic champions here and perhaps that will give them an advantage meanwhile lightweights offer a blistering pace as ever Mark yeah Paul and Finn will just they, they won't come down basically they'll keep going until they're in front and they will keep attacking but as you said, the beauty of now with the images we have uh, and the feed we have on the YouTube channel is that athletes can go back and watch their competitors and see what's happened or how the race has un unfolded and where they can actually try to attack or put somebody else under pressure. Yeah, it's fascinating to see this. You know, we've been uh, producing this coverage now since 2015 and those races get watched and watched and watched. We know that the St Paul School final in 2018 was watched by the New Zealand Olympic eight uh, for great technique. So people are feeding off anywhere and everywhere they can. But right now, the heavyweights on the far side, well, they've got an advantage over the lightweight Tokyo gold medalists uh, here. But this pattern we have seen before in this competition, Mark. So I suspect the Irish are not going to be hugely worried at this point. Yeah. And, uh, and the way they've raced in this in their lightweight event when they were in Tokyo, they were never really in front of the last couple hundred meters in the final. They're used to being behind, crews trying to go off hard, be in front of them. They stay in their rhythm. They'll just keep tabs of where the boat is next to them. And then when they really want to go, you'll see them put their foot down. It, that's what I mean. It's going to be really interesting how much they've enjoyed themselves since they won in Tokyo. If they can do what they normally do, they will light it up in the second half. So there's a question when the foot goes down on the gas, how much gas is left in the tank posed by uh, Olympic champion Mark Hunter. Now, how does the technique that these guys have now and the kind of approach to high rating, how does that compare to the doubles that you were racing, Mark, in 2012 and before that? Yeah, we didn't have the same cadence or the same rate as them. We'd never rate as high. We were, we rode a bit longer probably. Um, and we, obviously we have more power because they're a really physical crew. You know, Finn's under six minutes and 10 seconds on the Ergo. Paul does, does sub six minutes. So they are a very strong crew, but we would never rate this high. We'd normally be at 35, 36. And while we look at that shot there of the, of the Irish uh, Olympic champions, let's just ask about the, the grit. Uh, so a number of people ask me about the distinctive way that Paul O'Donovan there is, is gripping his skulls. Normally you'd see the thumb over the end. And, you know, is that a loss of leverage because he's not right in the end of the oars? Is that a loss of control because his thumb's not there? Why would you do that? Yeah, it's, it's his own style. I, I would never roll like that because obviously when you're trying to extract the blade from the water, your thumb gives you that control rather than just spinning it out. So there's probably more physical energy to do that. But if that's his style and that's the way he can go fast, uh, why would you change it? Well, listen, it worked for him. I think I would get Popeye arms if I tried to skull like that, but it's absolutely no problem. And the focus from these two, you know, they clearly want to win. And Paul told us in an interview du during the week, you know, he'd realised that winning is better than not winning. <laughs> That's what Some of the answers they give are priceless. But, yeah, exactly. It's always nice to win rather than having the pain of coming, uh, being second or losing. But... What we've spoken about, they weren't flustered by being behind. They put the hammer down now, and you're seeing the speed they have and the class of this double. Yeah, you're absolutely right. While we've been enjoying the wisdom of Paul O'Donovan, they have made that move. They have started to put the first down on the gas, and it does appear that there is still quite a bit of gas left in that tank, even after the elation of the Tokyo medal. So, well, they really are shifting now, Mark. Yeah, and I said that they wouldn't come down. They will just keep attacking, keep moving. Um, and you've seen it before, everybody that tries to race them, tries to get in front, tries to put them under pressure, but they don't get flustered by being behind. So Hayward and Mayer now have their work cut out and they've been rowed through in the second quarter of this race down the 2,100 metres of the Henley track. Beautiful view you can see behind us. And this is one of the reasons the Tokyo Olympic champions have come straight to Henley to race 
1771, the temple was built, looking down the course at us. The channel that you can see behind alongside that temple island was dug out in 1924. I was in the trophy room earlier inspecting these beautiful new trophies for the women's events. And the trophies for the men's events are littered with names, going back to the very first Grand Challenge Cup from 1839. And that's why they want to come here. That and the fact we have crowds. It's so wonderful to be back with crowds here at Henley. Yeah, and that's something we haven't really spoken about. When they, these guys are racing in Tokyo, there was no one there. You know, it was just other athletes competing. But to race with, you know, people on the bank, spectators, the energy that that gives you, you know, the, the excitement of racing at Henley, look, the boats moored up on the booms next to them. You know, you never get as close to the action as, as those people on the banks are, oh, sorry, on the booms are right there now. Skull and crossbones on the back of Paul O'Donovan, denoting the former medical school history of Cork University, which is now growing under their colours. Meanwhile, this is Tideway Scholars and Nottingham sitting behind the Olympic champions, just glancing across there and checking where they are on the course. But a privilege for them to be able to fa face a crew of this absolute quality. And that, that's the uniqueness of Henley again. It's another thing we have at the regatta is that, you know, under 23 athletes get to race and go up and race Olympic champions. You know, you don't really get to do that anywhere else. So, yeah, and that's so special for these young athletes you know they'll take this experience with them as they progress through their careers and maybe next year they'll be up against the the, uh, the irish guys again you know, Henley if they come back but you know a very dominant performance so far totally in control and this is what this irish club does well this is certainly a year in which we've been reminded of how much sport can lift us all. Sport has lifted us all, admiring the performance of these two from Ireland, from Skibbereen and from Cork University, Olympic champions from Tokyo, straight on the plane to Henley to race in front of the crowds, to bring the show to the regatta. I'm rising to my feet in the commentary box, just in appreciation of these two athletes. And well, what a performance from Hayward and Meyer as well, to hold onto these guys as they fly through the line winning the final of the doubles at Henley. You know, a great performance there. You know, Haywood and Mayer went off as we thought they would to try and put the Irish under pressure. And McCarthy and Donovan, you know, their class came through. Talked about their second half being strong. Um, you know, what a class act.